So the three couples decided to meet in New York and celebrate this thing. So that was the first uh, inspiration for the play, uh, that these three couples get together to celebrate these three decade birthdays. Um, and that got me going. Well, he's been writing about us for a long time. He's written four books. You know, one was a novel, but uh, you know, the the rest were nonfiction, and they were, you know, he 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 loves to reveal my deepest, darkest secrets to everyone, and uh, and the novel was even more so. Um, to have my husband writing a play that's got this incredible role for me, so I'm, um, and I'm kind of pinching myself all the time. I really oh. am lucky, let me tell you. This is, uh, this is I, an A plus. Uh, way, way higher than I thought I would reach. You know, when, when you cast, which is, this is all kind of new to me. I was on the other side of it. Uh, but I noticed that when you cast or, or you look for a director, or, you know, people say aim high, you know. It's about three couples, six people, who are very, very good friends. And they, and, and they're each, each of the men of, the, of each couple are turning into a new decade. One, one is becoming 60, one is becoming 70, and I'm becoming 80. So they start dealing about their friendships and what's going to happen to them for the rest of their lives and they decide perhaps they should all live together in kind of a commune. It's a very funny play but it's also very moving. It's about, it's about questions that many of us living today, baby boomers, us all, are, are reaching into our, our final years I guess you would say if you want to be graphic about it. I always played the mothers and the, gra you know, I played the, th so when I finally was cast in a role that was my own age in college, I didn't know what to do because I didn't have to have a limp or a cork or a thing or a makeup or the, right? So now I feel like I'm, I've been cast in something where I play my own age. I'm not playing myself because she's a photographer and arty and all that. I can bring some of that to me. But with people of my own, if I may use the word zeitgeist, it's people of an age who are dealing with they're aging and how they're going to live and what they're going to do and you know there are various problems and things which we have all had. So it's challenging to, to, to be in a modern, a new modern play that has nothing attached to it except the people and the writer, Michael Tucker, and um, it's kind of thrilling, it's kind of freeing. I played Billy who is an aging rock star hence the goatee and uh, he's been with this rock group for the last 42 years on the road but he has a wonderful marriage too that he probably spends about half his time with and he loves these weekends that they come up to Fern Hill and spend time with their friends. Well this is the, the discussion of the play is whether or not they decide to be sort of their own assisted living. They've been very close friends but will that translate into actually living together full time? These weekends are sort of their favorite uh, their favorite times of the year, I think. Well, we're married, but <laughs> I think we have a good relationship. Um, he's on the road most of the time, so that saves our marriage. <laughs> uh, we did it last year at the O'Neill Center, and I think people who are maybe over 50 will have a different perspective of it, and they'll recognize aspects of themselves and their marriages or relationships. But I think it was interesting last year because we had a lot of young people there because there were a lot of interns at the O'Neill. <laughs> and one of the girls came up to me. She was about 25. And she said, it was such a revelation to her. And I said, why? And she said, well, I never thought that older people had sex. <laughs>